Welcome to the online worship service uh, brought to you by the Dakota Riverside and the Crescent United Methodist Churches. We are in week two of a worship series titled Leading Causes of Life. And it is our hope and prayer that our time together will be a blessing to you. And as we gather online as a worshiping community, we also look forward to the day that we can be uh, together shoulder to shoulder, joining our voices in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. Let us begin our time together with this invitation to praise and prayer. Welcome to the community of faith. We are the family of God. We come connected as sisters and brothers seeking God's love. God's love is here. God's love is now. Let God's embrace be felt today. We are connected to God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We abide in Christ Jesus in love and compassion. May our spirits be renewed and our connection to God be strengthened through our worship service together today. Amen. Let us join in our prayer of thanksgiving. 
We love you, Lord, and are so thankful that you have bound us together as sisters and brothers in faith. You call us to walk together through times of testing and times of ease. You empower us as individuals and as a congregation to be your hands and feet during these days of uncertainty. Open our hearts this day, Lord. Imprint your message of love upon them, that all we say and do is done in your name and for the sake of your people and your world. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Colossian church. We are in chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As we listen to God's word, I pray that some part of it has taken root in your heart already. I ask that you hold tight to whatever it is you heard today as these scriptures were read. Hold tight, carry the best of it with you, not only during this time of worship, but as you move into the rest of this week.
Today we take up the second installment of our worship series titled Leading Causes of Life. Previously, we were asked to think about why and how we should consciously choose life instead of simply trying to avoid death. Our first choice then, which we will be asked to think about today, is to choose connection over isolation. We know there is great value in being connected. Social science has researched this topic and documented its value to our mental health. Medical science has studied it extensively and empirically shown how our bodies benefit from our being connected. So I think it's okay for us to accept that social connection improves both physical health and mental and emotional well-being. You know, we all think we know how to take good care of ourselves. We eat our veggies and we work out a bit and we try to get enough sleep. But how many of us are fully cognizant that social connection is just as critical as those other good practices? For decades, study after study has shown us that the lack of social connection is a greater detriment to our good health than obesity is, and than smoking, and than high blood pressure. On the other hand, having a strong and vital social connection leads to a 50% increased chance of longevity. It strengthens our immune systems. It helps us recover from disease faster. It may even lengthen our lives. People who feel more connected to others have lower levels of anxiety and depression. Studies shown that they also have higher self-esteem, greater empathy for others, and are more trusting and cooperative, and as a consequence, are more open to trusting and cooperating with others. So in other words, social connectedness generates a positive feedback loop of relational, emotional, and physical well-being. As Christians, we are likewise aware of the immeasurable value of connection when it comes to our own spiritual health and well-being. Being connected to God and with others who believe in God is essential to maintaining a well-grounded and spiritually healthy life. We know there is great value and restorative power in our connections and relationships. As Christians, we value connections that begin with God and extend through to the family, the church, and the community. Until recently, we took many of our connections for granted. We could go where we wanted, when we wanted. We could visit people without fear of, of giving or getting a life-threatening illness. And we could worship together in the same space at the same time. All that has changed as we now adopt and adapt new ways of connecting. Virtual worship, virtual Bible study, virtual coffee hour, remote access to this and to that. In all that, perhaps we are all gaining a renewed sense of the value of the connections that we have. We are learning that in adopting these new connection-enhancing practices, it's not always simply a one and done. It can be complicated, multifaceted, and oftentimes it needs to be repeated over and over. Maintaining connections and relationships requires great intentionality on our part. Adopting all these life-enhancing practices as our own is sometimes difficult to say the least. And for many of us, the older we get, the greater the difficulty. However, in embracing these changes, we are saying to ourselves, to our families and to our friends and to the world, that we choose life. We choose life. We choose to be connected with each other. We choose to live in this connection because it's life generating, it's life nurturing, it's life sustaining. 
it's worth it. Nurturing and sustaining healthy connections is a shared desire, an activity of virtually every living being. It's not peculiar or particular to just us as humans. Some say that there's a basic tension in all living things. And that tension is the decision whether to move toward or to move away from something. Whether a single cell organism or a highly complex creature such as ourselves, we are constantly asking the question, will my life be enhanced by attaching or separating myself. Think about it. Every functioning cell in your body is answering that question right now, and most of them are affirming the value of staying appropriately connected. So you might want to pause for a moment and thank your cells for sticking together. After all, that's what's keeping you alive. Spiritually, Two of our most important connections as individuals are the relationship that we have with God and the relationships that we have as members of a congregation or as a group of believers. As Christians, we live out our faith both personally and communally. Our religious impulses are informed by both our individual and our collective memories. That which we or others have experienced in our efforts to connect or reconnect with God, kind of create a seedbed of our hopes and dreams as we think about what the future will hold for us and for those we care for. And in that seedbed grows a vision of a future that is better than our present reality. So we work hard to make that vision come true. And if not for ourselves, then true for our children and for future generations. Connection is also important as a doorway to healing and to health. When we are spiritually ill, there is really only one way to become well. And that's to reconnect with God. It is likely that most people agree with the need to reconnect with God. But the truth is that many prefer to keep that relationship with God at arm's length. We want connection, but we prefer it on our terms. We want to stay within our comfort zone after all. So our relationship, our connection with God becomes sometimes a little tense. It almost becomes a fear or anxiety based. We imagine that instead of loving us, God is all about judging us or wanting to change us, and in our dark moments, perhaps even rejecting us. Our anxieties cause us then to erect spiritual barriers, barriers between our God and our family members and our church family, and it leads to spiritual loneliness. And our loneliness then makes us vulnerable and susceptible to spiritual decay, and our spiritual decay leads us away from and isolates us from all that God created us to be and to do. God overcame our self-erected spiritual barriers and our loneliness by choosing to live with us up close and personal in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus became our primary life-giving connection. Our connection with Jesus then alters our thinking, directing our thoughts away from those leading causes of death and helps us to focus on the leading causes of life. Jesus brings meaning and purpose to our lives, awakens our capacity to do that which is for the good of all, restores us to a life lived aware of and sharing in God's blessings and replaces our spiritual decay with a spiritual hope that motivates us to greet each day with joyful anticipation. 
So I hope today that as we are gathered virtually, we are remembering how Jesus is connecting with us and connecting us with all believers in love and in grace, those gifts that come from God. We celebrate God reaching out to connect us through the memories that we have, through the stories of the Bible and our own personal memories of what God has done for us and for those we love and continues to do so to this day. So to choose life, one must choose to live in connection with God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life. In his name, amen. Let us pray. Lord God, in times ancient and times contemporary, your call to relationship has been patient and persevering. Through our connection with you, we find community formed, common cause embraced, compassion unleashed, as you show us how to love others as you love us. We commit today to keeping our eyes open, our ears unstopped, and our hearts ready to respond as your Holy Spirit guides us in ministry and mission, as believers sharing Christ in our communities and in the world. In the name of our Savior and Lord, Jesus. Amen. Let us join our voices wherever we are in that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
As we move into the rest of this day and the week stretches out before us, let us live in the triune sense of community. As we experience God in community, creator, redeemer, sustainer, may we present ourselves in love and humble service to our families, to our friends, and to the world at large. Let us live in communion with God and with each other. Amen.